All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful day. We have a lot of things that we need to talk about, and I want you to stop getting tricked by this stock market, okay? So we are dealing with a very volatile debt ceiling situation. Even right now, as I'm recording this, they just walked into the highlight meeting, Biden and McCarthy. So towards the end of the video, I'm going to try to get you an update on what is coming out of it. But today was filled with a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of debt ceiling headlines, and you could have gotten fooled many times so I want to show you something and then on top of it you see this big drop right here it looks even crazier on TD Ameritrade we had a huge drop today and it was because of this AI generated picture there was reports on Twitter people were talking about it we got it pretty early too they were saying there was an attack on the Pentagon and it brought the markets down 20 points pretty quickly and then people found out that it wasn't true and then we came back to the whole debt ceiling thing so Chad we got a lot to talk about there was a ton of updates I'm on the computer today because I messed up my camera so oh wait that was the horn so you're gonna have to deal with me for a little bit but we have a lot to talk about today was wild it's gonna get crazier and I want to make sure you don't get pump fake so Chad drop your thumbs up on the video all that good stuff hopefully we see you live youtube.com slash the stock market but let's run it baby let's get right into it so like I said we're waiting for updates on the Biden McCarthy meeting again the weekend it was all bad news we were supposed to have an outline and we didn't but people were encouraged by the talks and then throughout the day this is here I'm just going to give you the lesson here you're going to see what I'm talking about but throughout the day there was a bunch of bad news bad news then a little bit of good news aka McCarthy was tweeting talking with reporters and pretty much said we don't have a deal we don't have a deal I'm willing to lose the speakership but I think we could still pull a deal by the end of the week there was a lot of back and forth but Sometimes the market wouldn't react, sometimes it would, and this is the key that I want to give you. This is what we've been saying this whole time. This bottom left, this is bonds. This right here is gold on any of the popper drops from here on forward. I already have this written down in the keys. It is very, very simple. We don't have much time left on what is going on, but if you do not want to get pump faked on any of the headlines, just watch bonds in gold. Pretty much, if there really is going to be fear, you will watch gold get back to where it was at just last week. Same thing with the bond yields, aka TLT, IEF goes up, bond yields go lower. This will show you there is a fear reaction. And ironically enough, that little fake news this morning, it showed us how well people respond by buying gold and bonds. And now, specifically related to the debt ceiling, that is what is the most important. So, that's your main lesson on not getting pump fake, but back to what we were saying here. We're waiting for these updates. They said they're going into the talk today. A lot of back and forth, a little bit of market moves today, but besides that, we're going to see what they say, but the rest of the day now was extremely hawkish. Now, this is what kind of relates to the debt ceiling drama and why I'm telling you to pay attention to gold and bonds because if you saw it today, there was a lot of hawkish and bearish news, but the market didn't reflect that. We've been going up on optimism, but some of the negative stuff, it hasn't been causing us to go down. It's only been causing these little reactions, and then if none of the fear gauges, bonds, gold hold, it starts to sell off right away. So this is where it gets interesting because we were talking about this a lot today. Point is, for now, the market has showed us no negative reaction to the debt ceiling and we are still waiting on the deal and that's what we're watching for, but... Just be on the lookout. Hopefully you don't get conditioned to thinking nothing will make us move because maybe we start moving when we least expect it or just after everybody gets enough of this. But what I'm trying to tell you, there was a lot today and the market reflected none of it. Literally in the morning, Kishkari, we were talking about how he talked about a pause for June. He came out today and said, well, no, 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 don't get it twisted. We would we would be raising rates in July even if we did that. Uh, Fed Bullard kid today came in and and he said he wants two more rate hikes. He said, I don't know when you're going to have them. I prefer sooner the better. But he said he wants two more rate hikes now. 
even by the end of this year. There was just a lot of hawkish talk. The regional bank news from Friday showed deposits going down, even Pac W. People took it as positive. They sold off, uh, I think, like $2.9 billion of their construction loans at a discount, and people took that as positive. It shored up liquidity. There was even a chip ban on Micron uh, from China, and the chips opened up very, very low, and they bounced back. But point I'm trying to tell you, you take all of this into today and like you had no reaction. The market just was firmly not doing anything waiting for this debt ceiling issue. So that's what we got. That's why we're waiting here to see this update. I'm sure we're going to bring all of this into tomorrow and we want to wait for the day we actually get a negative reaction so far besides just the hedges going up with the market going up. But like I said, don't get pump fake. There is not that much time left. Even Republican leaders are saying now they pretty much have this, this week. You have the next two days to get a deal or you really start to run out of time. Now, if you take a look at history, this is what we were saying today. There was just so many different instances where things have been pushed to the wire. Pretty much it was like 1995, 2011, 2013, and even 2021. Those were the only other moments we had this little amount of time left. But now even February 2013, they took it all the way to the ex date. So February 2013, their debt ceiling crisis, what ended up happening, they reached the ex date in February that year. They agreed on a suspension till May. It moved the new ex date to around October. Then on October 17th, 2013, on the day they were going to run out of money, that is when they came out with something. So even then, right now, I'm getting a headline that says Biden says that we are optimistic. So I think he is speaking right now with McCarthy, but he says we're going to get something done. We talked about the need for bipartisan agreement. We need to cut spending. And Biden says we should be looking at tax loopholes. Let's see what McCarthy says. Uh, the futures aren't open as I'm recording this. So we're going to see. But like we were just saying, you know, the history of all of this and how this is played out. We're, we've pushed it to the limit and we're getting there. And then here's another fun fact. Where was it? I think it was in 79, but everybody says we've never defaulted, but a delay in the debt limit raising in 79 plus a computer issue, we actually did miss a bond payment on maturing bills. So that's a little fun fact. But again, right now, Biden's saying we need to cut spending and he's optimistic. We need to see how this plays out and what McCarthy says. But so far, it doesn't sound like they have the outline of the deal, which we pretty much need in the next two days. So that may be our other update, but we're going to see. Oh, no, I forgot to switch the screens, man. I had this chart up. I was showing you guys the 2013. Uh, so maybe I'll just have to edit it in there over the other video. So now you're just seeing this twice if you're wondering why that's there. Uh, but let's go to the final key now. Uh, just coming into tomorrow and everything, we still have a little bit of a schedule. We had a little bit of a surprise update today that Powell will be speaking tomorrow on Tuesday. I don't know the time. I think it's going to be 11 a.m. Eastern, so we'll see. But that's probably going to be the big driver besides these Biden-McCarthy updates and how people in the futures and bonds feel about it. Other than that, though, the minutes and PCE Wednesday and then Thursday or Friday, Wednesday and Friday, minutes and PCE, that's going to be the kicker. And then guess what? I know it's only Monday. Happy Monday. But you get the non-farm payrolls the next week after this. So keep in mind now with Powell tomorrow, the rest of these events. We are probably going to have a lot of reactions. So, Chad, that is pretty much everything. But now we're on the computer. I got something for you, baby. Ah. Let us get into the play. So right off the bat, I got three plays that I'm looking at. I hope you watched yesterday's video about the bond lotteries. We're going to talk about it a little bit, but the first play is Pfizer. Oh, 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 Ozempic. Okay, it's supposed to be O'Reilly Auto Parts, but Ozempic, this is the diabetes weight loss drug that is sweeping the world, and Wall Street absolutely loves this. Novo, that's the maker. NVO, go look at their stock. They've went absolutely insane. Honestly, I, I hit the horn. I didn't mean to, but... I'll just show you it again. Novo, they are the makers of Ozempic. This stock has gone absolutely nuts. Even it, it doesn't even look like it's trading in the years we've been trading in because 
it has been such a breakout winner. Again, this drug Ozempic has everybody going crazy. So there was an update, and then apparently Pfizer is working on a similar drug or weight loss candidate. And then there was a study with data that came out today that said Pfizer's, uh, their inject injectable Ozempic did better than Novo's, and the stock went up 5%. It dipped up even like 6% after hours, but... That was the biggest run up in the last like six weeks. We made a play on it. We played Novo earlier on the data. Then we sold out once we found out that Pfizer had their own. And then Pfizer started going and I grabbed like 300 shares at like 35 or 3650, I think, or 3750, something like that. Yeah, 3750 on 300 shares. So a little bit more than a dollar share riding that one into tomorrow. I think that one is really going to be active. That is play number one. Then play number two, the ZN, baby. The, I'm talking about the options from yesterday, and I would play this according to your risk size. Essentially, every $100, $200 has 5 to 10x opportunity. So if you're betting the farm, you deserve to lose. I don't usually say this, but again, a lot of people are saying, so what do you think for the debt ceiling? What do you think? I think this play accurately describes it. I think it's wise to have very tiny plays that could return a lot on it, but I wouldn't be betting the farm here again. The history on this is wild. Even if things do eventually go crazy, I don't think you need to bet the farm early to respond, and you could probably react in the moment and do better off than kind of saying, yes, I think what's never is going to happen is, is about to happen right here, right now. So we'll see, but keep your eyes out for those. Those plays came down a little bit. Uh, now when futures open, I want to see how these headlines kind of affect thing uh, affects things so we'll go from there we have not heard from McCarthy yet but that is play number two and then finally play number three I'm still in this my shares went positive finally uh, but Tesla I'm waiting for them or watching to see if they have the lagging effect like Netflix and it just all really depends on the momentum we talked about this if you take a look at Tesla they're pretty much back at their pre-earnings price. Compare them to any of the big tech NASDAQ names, NVIDIA, uh, any of the chip makers, Amazon, Tesla, Microsoft, Apple. Everything is running again, even Netflix, which went lower and then went back up. So I'm thinking if the momentum stays good, we've been holding it. I'm now green on it. I think there could be a decent amount of upside here as it's just lagging comparative on the year to all of the other big tech, big tech outperformers. So we will see what happens. But besides that, those are the main plays. Just going to be watching bonds and gold. We're making a couple of those flips, but I think uh, it's getting down to the wire and we're going to juggle between the debt ceiling, see when we actually get a reaction, and then the next tier of everything, it's going to come down to being data dependent and then back to the second half of the year with a back and forth set of Fed members and data. So I hope you're ready, but... That is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. And I'm going to take something out of Jamie Dimon's playbook, baby. It don't matter about one good quality. You know, it don't matter if you have one good strength to build everything around. Do you actually care? Do you actually give a S? Are you in the game? Do you work hard? Do you care? Can you step up when something goes wrong? Are you willing to work hard and work harder than everyone? That's from Jamie Dimon, baby. So I'm going to leave you with that. Meditate on it and think about it. But Chad, we are firmly in the game right now. It's only about to get crazier. So you made it this far. Get that long term so you don't waste your time and get ready for the second half of the year. But Chad, I love you. I will see you tomorrow morning. And that's it. I'm done. I'm done. You can't even see how awkward I am. So this is beautiful horn. Mm -hmm.